In this video, I'm going to show you how I like to shoot landscape photography when there's no cloud in the sky at sunrise or sunset. So in the situation where you really wanted that big cloud cover and you were going for that beautiful color underneath the sky on a sunrise or a sunset, unfortunately, nature had other plans and the sky was all clear. So in that situation, what you need to do when you're doing landscape photography is make your foreground interest the main subject. In other words, what I'm trying to say is when you're doing your framing, make sure that your top, say, third of frame is the sky section and your bottom two thirds are your foreground. So you're gonna have to look for some really beautiful foreground interest. In this case, what I've got is this beautiful coastal region here and the waves are coming in over the rocks. So what I'm gonna do is just a slightly slow shutter speed and I'm gonna be using a filter this morning from Case Filters. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get set up here, I'm gonna get my framing. I'm actually gonna wait until the sun just peaks over the top of the horizon there, and I'm probably gonna go for something like a bit of a sun star, just to add that little bit of interest up in the background there. But you'll see what I mean when I've got the shot, and you'll see the importance of making the foreground your main interest. So, it may not be water, it could be something like flowers, or it could be something like uh, another type of rocky outcrop. If you're out in the desert, it could be lines in the sand. But yeah, I mean, the fact that you've made the effort to get up early and do this photography thing, you don't wanna throw that away. So yeah, let me get set up and I'll get the shot and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just currently in the process of getting set up. Now, if you're ever doing anything like this, please make sure that you're safe and that if you haven't got someone with you, just make sure that you're back far enough away because there could be a rogue wave comes in and the last thing I wanna see is people getting swept out to sea or their gear getting swept out to sea. And I have heard of people losing their complete packs. As you notice, I've got my pack on my back. So if I need to get up quickly, and scarper away from a wave, I can do that very easily. So the last of the tide is just coming in. The tide's actually going back out. I'm gonna use this little bit of a crevice here to act as a lead in line going out through here and I'm gonna be basically facing straight towards the sun. So let me just get set up here. This is the little um, Cire 7C Traveler tripod. It's been an absolute ripper and if you haven't seen a video on that, I've done a video on this one. Um, I'll just leave it up in the top corner for you. But it's been a fantastic little tripod. Can't speak highly enough about it. So at the moment what I'm doing, I've got my composition all set up. I'm using the Nikon Z7 with the 14 to 30 millimeter F4S lens. I'm sitting at 14 millimeters. I'm shooting f11 ISO 64 and I've got a shutter speed of just over a second. So what I'm doing is I'm just waiting for these waves to come in. As soon as they come in and they're on their way back out, that's when I hit the two second release shutter. And then I'll get this nice smooth water as I speak now going back out and I'll be leading back out into my composition. Now, remember that part I said about being safe in these types of locations? Yeah, well, I should really learn to take my own advice. Yeah! <laughs> ah, the beauty of landscape photography. <laughs> it was worth the shot.
With the spectacular wave movement captured in the bottom right of frame, this wasn't quite the shot I wanted. So since I was now completely soaked from my knees down, I stayed in this spot and kept trying. This shot actually turned out okay, but the water movement is a little too overpowering for the frame I was going for. I still wanted water movement in the foreground, but I didn't want to lose too much of my rock structure. I ended up settling for this shot, which I kind of thought was well balanced. It had the right combination of rocky foreground and water movement, leading the eye out to the rising sun, which had just a few beams of light dropping down into my horizon line. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you ever are doing photography and you don't have cloud, always try to ensure that your foreground interest is your main part of your subject in your composition. As I always say, never stop creating and I'll see you next time.